seconds to go. Start. Mr. Vice Chairman, sir, many brilliant speakers have preceded me. At the outset, I would like to tell you that this report has pointed out very emphatically that the autonomy of the radio and television must be maintained. The principle of autonomy has already been enunciated by the Chanda committee. This is a very brilliant ideology which must be accepted. There is no doubt about it. While going through the bill which they have reproduced in the report, we have many doubts about its implementation which I should be very humbly pointed out before this house. The first and foremost question is autonomy of Doordarshan and all India radio because apparently these mass media are to be influenced by the government party in power and departmental regimentation is expected. Sir, it is very fundamental that we have to examine how far this autonomy can be expanded until the AIR and the Doordarshan have their own economic allotment until they are self-sufficient in their finances so long as they go with a begging bowl to the government how far the proposal can be implemented is a moot question. Sometimes we criticize in the house that there is politicking. It was there earlier, it exists today also. When a national perspective is emerging, if we compare the questions, we will see that when they approach the government for money, when the service is regulated by the government, it is expected that they act according to the whims of the departments and the authorities concerned. While we are going to have such a change, we see in this report what is reported to be happening in other countries of the world. Only very recently, France has enacted a law which has been reported in this book where they have said that the parliament in France has made an act and what are the cardinal principles they have accepted. They have accepted that a reorganization be made and established a service. The service is controlled by a board of governors comprising half from the state, two from parliament representatives of the program companies and two representatives of the staff elected by the unions. Now, when we come to this problem of reorganizing our structure by giving more autonomous powers, we will have to consider the fact that it is more a size of continent, a problem which the people of India have recognized on linguistic basis. So, sir, I fundamentally say that when organization of a national trust is considered, these points must be very basically considered at the national level. These three points are very vital and I think they must be considered at the national level. The first thing is, if you make a centrally organized national trust, how can it preserve the cultural heritage of a multilingual country like India and how can it develop the regional languages in this country which is necessary for national integration. Sir, while forming the zonal committees, we see that the interests of the smaller states 
are suffering. If you analyze what is given in this report, you will notice that though all India radio is there for the last 50 years, the coverage is still less than cent percent. In my state of Odisha, I know that even now the coverage is less than 70 percent. So, we have been seeing what are the problems before the nation. Radio and television are accepted in the world as a mass media of communication with great values. We cannot transform our technology and we cannot go in for modern methods of agriculture which are there in more developed countries of the world because there though they are not educated in the expertise of science and the different faculties, but they are things on the television and practice them in the field so that they could achieve the highest goals. So, here the fundamental question is and they have said it in this report also that this autonomy cannot be poured from above from external sources of organization. If we create such a structure, it must be evolved from within. Then what is the source for evolving from within? We have created trustees. Many members have said that they are part time trustee, they are whole time trustees, we see discrimination and so on. What do we expect of the trustees? What is their qualification? There will be nominated trustees amongst them, there will be a man of eminence in science and other of culture. These are the only two qualifying clauses it forming the trust. But the most fundamental thing is if you want to increase the efficiency, if you want professionalism to grow so that you have a powerful media of radio and doordarshan, then should we not recognize people who have worked for 30 or 40 years professional people who are recognized in the field, the workers and artists who have suffered immensely and who have worked for the success of this thing, should they not be recognized? This is very relevant question at present. Stop.